Okay, hello everyone. All right, so the first program in Chapter 7 is Total Sales. Okay, so design a program that asks the user to enter a store sales for each day of the week. The amount should be stored in a list. Use a loop to calculate the total sales for the week and display the result. <clears throat> okay, so let's start from the very first line. Um, it says we should design a program that's going to ask the user to enter um, to enter a store sales for each day of the week. So let's go ahead and create a function to serve this purpose, right? I'm going to call it, I'm going to define a function and I'm going to call it enter daily sales, right? It's going to be, it says enter the store sales for each day of the week. So I'm going to call it enter daily sales. <clears throat> And so now we have to uh, figure out if this function is going to, <coughs> sorry, we have to figure out if this function is going to accept in any argument. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a list containing strings of the days of the week. So it's going to be a list that contains Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all the way to Sunday. And that list I'm going to, we're going to define a parameter for it. So once this function is called, we need to pass in that list to, to this function. So I'm going to define a parameter and I'm going to call it days of the week. Days of the week this way. And then in the function itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, loop through this list and then access each day and then display it. So I'm going to say, please enter the sales for Monday. Please enter the sales for Tuesday, you know, so, so on and so forth. And so the, the way I'm going to do that is with a, with a for loop, okay? Now we can. There are several ways we can use a for loop to access elements in a list. Uh, this is actually I'm going to use a straightforward way, which is to uh, create a target variable. Um, so I'm going to call this day of the week. Um, day. Oh, actually, let me call. Let me call it. Um, let me call this current day. Okay, current day. Um, so for current day in days of the week. Right, so basically what's going to happen is each time, okay, the loop iterate, all right, so starting from the first iteration, it's going to take the first day, <coughs> sorry, I still have my cough, I'm sorry. So it's for the first time the loop iterate, the list will contain, mon like, let us, the list will contain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The first time it iterates, Monday will be stored in current day. We will have access to current day. We can use it in the for loop. The next time the loop iterate, current day will store Tuesday, and then we, we have access to it. We can use it in the loop and so on and so forth. It does that until it goes through the days of the week list containing the you know the days okay the, the days of the week as in, in strings. So for current day in days of the week, I'm going to now ask the user to enter the sales for that particular current day. So using the input function is going to be tricky. So first. I'm going to start with a print function and then I'll use an input function. So I'm going to use a print function just to display a text to the user. So the print function, I'm going to say print, and I'm going to just display a message saying, please enter, <coughs> please enter, sorry, please enter sales for. And then because we have access to the day, we can now use it in our print statement. So please enter sales for current day. So by default, when you pass arguments into the print function separated by commas, they are displayed with a space separate in them. So this is one argument, and there's a comma, and this is another argument. By default, when you pass those arguments into the print function this way, they are displayed with a space separate in them. So it's going to display print, sorry, it's going to display please enter sales for space, whatever value is in current day. Okay, and because we are looping through the list, it's going to display, please enter sales for Monday, please enter sales for Tuesday, and so on and so forth, all the way to Sunday. Okay. And so once I do this, um, I'm going to also pass in an argument, which is going to be a colon, just text, another string, just a colon here with a space. Um, as a matter of fact, if I do this, because by default the print function has a separator of a space, there'll be a space between the, the name of the day and the colon. So I'm just going to go ahead and concatenate whatever is stored in current today, which will be a string, to this string here, just so it looks good. All right, now that I, after I'm done displaying this information to the user, now I'm going to use the input function, okay, to prompt the, the user to type in something. So the input function, 
will basically let's see is it going to display any any message no so the input function is basically going to pop up some kind of text box <coughs> okay, my cough it's this hot chocolate that I've been drinking in school I've stopped drinking it but you know every time I drink it it just makes me cough but I've stopped so it's gone it's gone you know I, so yeah so that's why I'm coughing so sorry about that <coughs> all right so the input function by the input function is going to basically pop up some kind of text box and it's going to allow the user to type in something right and so whatever the user types is going to be returned to us it's going to be returned okay as a string all right so so once the user types in something it says please enter the sales for current day uh, we need a place to store it right but the thing is like i said input function returns a string you know whatever the user types it's going to it's going to return that value as a string but in this case we're asking for sales which is going to be basically uh, numeric values in, in uh, to be specific we need a float a floating point values because it's going to have decimals it could be fifty dollars and twenty cents it could be twenty point eight or something so we, we we can't use a string because we can't use strings in calculations we need to make sure we convert whatever the input function is returning whatever the user has typed that the input function is returning we need to convert it to a float and I'm going to do that with a float function around whatever the input function is going to return so I'm going to call the float function around the input function this way. <clears throat> and once it's returned, once the float function is returning whatever the user has typed as a float, we need a place to store it. So I'm going to create a variable that's going to store that. And that is going to be the uh, current, day, uh, current daily sale, right? So I'm going to call it current, uh, let's just call it daily sale, daily sale. So that's going to be a particular, um, you know, you know, sale. Okay, the daily sale, and then when the loop iterates again, it's going to ask the user again, please enter sales for let's say Tuesday, and then the user is going to type in the value it's going to store here. But the thing is, the program wants us to store, okay, the these these values, these sales in a list. It says over here the amounts should be stored in a list, okay, which means we need a list to to store basically these values in there. So. Up here in our function, I'm going to declare a list, an empty list, and I'm going to call it daily sales. It's going to be a list, it's going to be an empty list. So I'm going to declare an empty list. And once we have the daily sale, I'm going to, okay, once we have a daily sale for a particular day, I'm going to append that sale to this list. Okay, so daily sale. Sorry, daily sales dot append this way, and I'm going to append the daily sale. Right, so it's going to basically append add this particular daily sale to the end of daily sales here. And once we are done looping through the um, this uh, basically once once this loop is done, we'll have this particular list, this particular daily daily sales list. Okay all okay populated with the daily sales that the user typed once we're done we need we need to return it so i'm going to go ahead and return that list so that other parts of the program can use it so return daily sales once we're done <coughs> all right so we're done with this function all right so the, um, it, it also says that the amount should oh, over here sorry it says use a loop to calculate the total sales for the week and display the results all right so once we have the value stored in daily sales as in, in this list we can create a loop that's going to go through that list and basically add them all up okay to get our total sales let's create a function for that as well so i'm going to define a function and i'm going to call it let's call this calculate total sales or, or let's let's call it calculate weekly sales right because if we're adding all of them up then that's going to be uh, with the weekly sale so let's let's do calculate weekly sale I guess All right, we have to figure out if this function is going to accept an argument alright so if it's going to um, sorry if it's going to calculate the weekly sale then it needs the daily sales so, so that it can calculate all of them up it can add, add all of them up and so 
this function one anytime we call it we need to make sure that we pass in the, the daily cell the list that contains our cell so that this function can add them all up so I'm going to define a parameter okay which is going to basically be a list all right so I'm going to call it daily sales now it doesn't matter that doesn't matter this name is the same as this this the, the scope of this variable is within this calculate weekly sale function in the scope of this variable here in this case it's a list the scope of this list here is within this enter daily sales function the scope of this list is within this calculate weekly sale function they are like they're like twins right but they are not the same okay it doesn't matter because they you know they they are accessed different like the scope is is is, is in different places so it's, it's it's not a problem that they have the same names all right so this function is going to need the daily sales list in order to go through it and add them all up all right so once we have the list we are going to go through it using a for loop but what are we doing we are calculating the total right so before that before the for loop i'm going to create a variable and i'm going to call it total and before we add them all up total is going to be zero before we start adding all the cells up total is going to be zero so now we have the daily sales let's go ahead and loop through it this time around i'm going to do it differently than this i'm going to access the element in this daily sales list using index and i'm going to use the indices or indexes to access these elements or these sales and so i'm going to create a target variable and i'm going to call it for current day sale in range okay the target variable is current day sale in range i'm going to use the length called the length function the length function the length of this particular daily sales okay all the sales all right so let me explain this so the length of daily sales so we know we know there are going to be seven days so basically seven sales so i'm just going to remove this for now length of daily sales according to this program will be seven so basically that's what i've done so for current day sale in range seven this is basically okay each time the loop iterates it's going to assign the numbers zero all the way to six to current day sale so each iteration the first iteration it's going to assign zero to current day sale and then iterate again the second iteration is going to assign one all the way to current day sale sorry to, to current day sale and then when i iterate again it's going to assign the value two to current day sale all the way to six now seven is not included seven is like the end is like the ending limit it's not included so by typing in seven here you're basically looping starting from zero all the way to six if you type in let's say 10 you are assigning target uh, values to this target variable okay starting from zero all the way to nine okay so this is the ending limit but it's not included uh, included when it's iterate iterating or oh, yeah basically iterating so by by doing uh, by doing or by typing length of daily sales assuming we have of course we're going to have seven days it's going to assign okay when the loop is iterating it's going to assign the number zero okay all the way to six right to current day sale and we are using that in the, the the value that it's assigning to current day sale to access a particular element in the daily sales list right we know that if you have a list of let's say let me use the comments to explain this really quickly if you have a list say zero uh, so let's let's do um two four six eight ten we know that you can access these elements by the by the indices or by the indexes so the first element has an index of zero the, se the second element has an index of one third element has an index of two and so on and so forth okay the last element has an index of one less than the length of the list right so the length of the list is basically how many items are in the list there are one two three four five elements in the list but the index of the last element is one less than the length of the list which is five one less than five is four okay you start from zero to access the element so this has an index of zero index of one index of two three and then four even though this is the fifth element it has an index of four so the reason why we are doing this the reason why we are basically creating this loop is, is so that we can use the values assigned to current day sale each time you know at any particular point while the loop is iterating to access the elements in the daily sales list all right so first time is going to be zero okay all the way to six assuming 
or you know in this case we'll have seven days in you know daily sales so so it'll start from zero all the way to six okay I just wanted it to be clear all right so if that's the case what we want to do is we want to add all of, uh, add the value the current value okay based on where we are in the list we want to take that value and add it up to total okay starting from the first all the way to the last so basically we are taking what's already stored in total okay so total is going to be equal to what's already stored in total plus the current day sale actually we can call this the current daily sale I like to always add index to it so we know that it's an index but let, let's just call it current daily sale for now we know that it's going to contain basically uh, um, the index of the value we want to access in the daily sales list so the first time that I trade it's going to be zero so what we are doing is we are accessing the element at index zero of daily sales so that's why I'm going to pass in current daily sale here okay in, in the square brackets I'm accessing if it's if it's going to start at zero then we're accessing the element at in at index zero of daily sales of the daily sales list so next time that I trade current daily sale will be one which means we're accessing the second element okay or the second sale okay in daily sales okay in the daily sales list so that's that's what we're doing so we are taking what's already stored in total and then we are adding you know the current daily sale we are on in the in the daily sales list okay so the first time total is zero so it's going to be zero plus assuming the first sale that was entered was twenty four dollars it's going to be zero plus twenty four and then we're going to get twenty four we are taking the result and storing it in total the next time that I trade we are taking what's already stored in total which will be twenty four assuming the next element in daily sales is let's say you know forty we are taking 24 plus 40, which will be 64. We are taking 64. We are we are, we are adding. We are we are putting storing it in total. So basically, we are we are accumulating the total in this variable here. So by the time this loop is done, we we'll basically have the total. And then once we are done outside the loop, we return the total. So that's that's the purpose of this function. It calculates the total based on values in the list and then returns it. Okay. We're done with this function.